Hey guys, it's Clara from Online Fabric Store. Goblet pleats have a traditional look, while cartridge pleats have a more modern style, but they're made in pretty much the same way. I'm going to show you how to make professional looking drapery headers for both types of pleats. So let's get started. The materials you'll need are drapery fabric, drapery lining, a ruler, buckram, thread, a fabric marker, a hand sewing needle, scissors, drapery rings, an iron, and a sewing machine. There's a number of ways to sew curtain panels, so choose your favorite method and put together your panel up to the point of the header. We suggest our back tab curtains tutorial for a simple method or our inverted box pleat curtain tutorial for a professional look, which is the technique I'm using here. I added a band of solid fabric at the bottom of the panel as a decorative accent. Measure your panel from the bottom hem and mark your desired finish length with a pin on both sides. Fold the fabric at the pins and iron. Cut off any extra fabric so there's double the height of the buckram left above the crease. Drapery buckram is used in the header to make the pleats look crisp and hold their shape. Four or five inch buckram is typically used for longer drapes. Place the buckram below the crease and fold the fabric over it. Tuck under the rest of the fabric and iron. Use pins to plan out the size and spacing of the pleats. The width of the panel before it's pleated should be about two times the finished width of the panel. If you need your panel to be an exact width, you can figure out the pleating on scraps of fabric before sewing the panel. I like to start in the middle and center either a pleat or the space between the pleats. You can try both to see which works better for your width. My cartridge pleats will be three and three quarters inches with four and a half inches in between and three and three quarters inches on each end. There's no right answer, so do what you think looks best for your curtains. If you're attaching the outside edge of the curtain to the wall, one of the ends should be the distance from the rod to the wall, which is known as the return. If you're making goblet pleats, you may want the size of the pleats to be larger. Use a disappearing marker or chalk to mark a line from each pin to the bottom of the buckram. Pin the header in several places. Fold the header so the first two lines match up with the front of the curtain facing out. Sew down the line, backstitching at the beginning and end. Repeat for the rest of the pleats. Cut about a foot of buckram for each pleat and wind it up so it fits inside. This will hold the pleats in a cylindrical shape. I'm using rings with clips and attaching them to the back of the pleat and the buckram. You can also use drapery hooks and eyelet rings. Make sure you take the hardware into account when determining the height of the drapes. Hand sew the edges of the heading if you don't want the stitching to be visible. See our invisible stitch tutorial for details. If you're making cartridge pleats, the curtain is ready to hang. Goblet pleats are formed by pinching the bottom. To do this, form three small pleats below the heading and tack them together with a needle and thread. You can also add embellishments like buttons if you like. For a softer look, you can use stuffing instead of buckram to hold the shape of the pleats. To hide the stuffing if you're looking down on the curtain, use fusible stabilizer on the back of the fabric and cut circles to fit into the pleats. These curtain panels are ready to hang. For my room, I'm going with the cartridge pleats, which will be stationary, but they also work well as functional curtains since they're easy to slide open and closed. Thanks for watching this OFS project.